Hi, I'm talking today to Anne O'Keefe. Anne is a solution-focused therapist and RUIN expert. Hi, Anne. How are you? Good morning, Joanne. How are you? Wonderful. Lovely to be talking to you today, Anne. And today we're going to be having a discussion about RUIN reading and some frequently asked questions that people may have. So let's begin with what is a reading and how does it work? Yes, a, a rune reading, first of all, the word rune, it's spelled R-U-N-E. It actually is a really ancient word that means to whisper. So our ancestors used to share information and wisdom by doing what we're doing now, which is talking, but also storytelling and sharing myths and songs and poems. So when we have, when I do a reading with a client, what I'm actually doing is, is I'm really the messenger. So I'm the middle person in between them and their higher self and their unconscious mind. So my job is to interpret the angular symbols, there's 24 angular symbols in the elder runes. My job is to translate them, channel any information that comes through me, share that with the person, and then if they have any questions or specific things they want to ask, a bit like a counselling session, then we leave lots of space and time for them to ask any questions and to get a real good solution so that they feel They've got ideas and solutions and a way forward to whatever's going on in their life. Can anyone be a reader and why? Yes. Um, any, anyone can be a reader. Um, it takes, like anything, whether you're learning the piano or yoga or writing, it's going to take time and commitment and it's going to get really about going deep with the knowledge of the runes. The runes have actually been around for over 10,000 years. It started in the Middle East. So places like Iran, um, ancient Babylonia, where they had cuneiform angular writing. And it's only when people started moving over to the West and the tribes that, of course, people take their culture and their language. So it's a real good thing when I train people to be readers, as I do, I do um, in beginners in intermediate training, I encourage people to get a good history and origins and mythology room so they can really feel it deeply within their self and have a real grounding with it, like any tradition that you'd learn. And then they can take this forward. And I feel that anyone that's interested in spiritual growth, anyone that loves symbolism, anyone that loves connecting, bringing the ancient into modern, Anyone who's interested in that can be a reader, but again, it takes time and patience and commitment. And how does free will relate to having a reading? It relates 100%, Joanne, because people only come to me, one, if they're looking for answers um, or they're looking to get some clarity. So what I always say to every single person I do a reading with, it's not my will, it's a thy will. So sometimes we hear things in life that we don't always like or we don't always agree with, but it could actually be an element of the truth. And that's what we need to see and hear and experience. Um, but again, I always say to every person, what you do with the information that comes out of a reading is entirely at your free will. You can completely ignore what I'm going to say. But often people come because they are seeking counselling and guidance and advice. So they do want to speak to another person that may be absent, wisdom and experience. To get almost be like a wonder wall. They can bounce ideas off me or get ideas and clarity or sometimes see a way out of a situation into a much better situation. So free will is what the whole thing is about. And what can be asked in a reading, and how accurate are readings? Uh, 
That's a brilliant question, Joanne. In fact, I have my runes here now. <laughs> and I have the rune of the month. <laughs> I thought I'd show this up to you and the, and the viewers. Um, it's about patience and cycles and commitment and laying foundations. This is the rune that we're in now. And the reason I show this to you now is that we can ask anything in a reading. Um, and yes, they are accurate in that one, I've had excellent feedback. I've got feedback on my website. Sometimes stuff comes out that can be hidden for people, i.e. what's going in their unconscious mind, stuff that may have occurred in their past or their present that they've not shared with another human being. Um, but anything can be asked in a reading. But I would say, you know, as a professional person, I'm only going to do something that feels ethically right, and I'll be checking in with my higher self and their higher self, and this is the crucial thing. If it's for the highest good of all that they know this, um, you know, if I know that a person is seriously unwell, which I have worked with them, it may not be appropriate to come out with something directly. That could be very shocking and very hurtful. But what I can say is maybe it would be interesting for you to maybe have a check up at your GP. How's your health doing? Have you looked at nutrition? How's your levels of stress in your lifestyle? So it's getting people to think for themselves. So it's not me, it's not people being passive in the reading. On the contrary, it's about them being interactive in it and it's about them really helping. I, I like to help people to help themselves. So it's empowering people to, for them to take the right steps. And then they can look back in time and say, yeah, I took the right decision there. I've done or said the right thing that was right for me. And often people have got back to me where they've moved abroad or they've got married or had children or they're doing the job they like. And sometimes the results come out, you know, maybe months or even years later. And they say, you know, that reading really helped me. But I didn't always realise it at the time. Um, but things developed and grew. So sometimes um, a reading can be about something immediate, you know. Am I going to go for this job interview and get it? Is it a good idea to go to this place on holiday or not? Um, but sometimes the results can come through at the perfect time. And we have to trust in divine timing. So. And what are the runes? Yeah, the runes are a wonderful way of communication. So that we use in the Western world, well, in, in the UK, I should be specific here, the Judeo-Roman A to Z, whereas the runes are a set of 24 angular symbols that were really developed in the Middle East, came over to the northern countries, um, Scandinavia, Norway, Germany, Denmark, Iceland, where there's great stories. You can see standing stones with runic symbol on. You can go into the museums and see wonderful pieces of jewellery and artefacts with these exquisite runes on that all tell a story because all words of information will tell a story. So really, the runes are a way, a compass for life. They help us direct us in all different areas of life. So when we consult the runes, we're almost consulting a higher, wiser part of ourselves. And really the mythology of the runes was created by Odin, who, as a shaman, he put himself through a initiation. And he hung for nine days and nine nights on something called the ash tree, the world tree. And he wanted to find out what was his purpose in the world. It's a question that we still ask ourselves now. Why are we here? What are my gifts and talents? How will I be remembered? So the runes appear to him in the roots of the ash tree. It's quite magical. And he was gifted the runes to share them with humanity. So to me, the runes are very connected with the elements and the earth, the air, the fire, the water. They're very much connected with animals and trees and crystals and herbs and essences. So they're very much of this planet that we live on. So when we consult the runes, we are connecting with our higher selves, but we're also connecting with all the elements. And um, sometimes the runes can um, make us laugh. Uh, sometimes they can um, tell us things quite honestly and quite bluntly. And sometimes they say, well, things are a bit hidden at the moment. You're not ready to hear that now. So these runes, these angular shapes 
Um, we can still see in the world around us, uh, there's a traffic sign, which is one way only, um, which is an arrow pointing upwards. That's a ring symbol. Um, the symbol that the CND peace campaign developed in the 60s, that's a ring symbol. Um, what we put at the end of our greetings cards or our text messages or our emails, a little cross, that is a ring symbol, which means with love or well wishes from me to you. So we still have these rooms in our modern life. And just a final question to finish off. Are re room readers psychic? What happens in a room reading is that it's about really listening. And the greatest skill that we can give to others is listening, really actively, consciously listening. I'm a trained counsellor, uh, as well as a hypnotherapist and a solution-focused therapist. So my key is really listening, not just with the ears, but with the eyes and body language as well. And listening to what people are saying and expressing and what they're not. And it's about creating a sacred space so that people can feel safe and we can develop trust and rapport. We can do that on Skype, we can do that in person, we can do that in a small group as well when I do training to train people to be room readers. So it's about really giving the person the opportunity to really express themselves safely and honestly. And then we'll, I'll decide what's the most appropriate room spread to do. We can have a very simple room reading, which is literally just one room. It's called Odin's Room, and it gets straight to the heart of the matter. Or we can do a bigger room, which might go a lot more in depth. I have a particular reading that I do called the Three Lifetimes Reading, and that looks at people's past lives, their earlier life as a child. It looks at their life now. It also looks at their future life and their next incarnation. That's a really big, in-depth reading, and that can really show up themes and patterns in people's life, especially if they're repeating patterns. If they're repeating patterns that are great, that's wonderful. But if they're repeating patterns or themes that are not so great, then they might need to get the learning and wisdom from that. And this is the key, get the understanding. So the reading will be appropriate to what the person really needs at that time. And just to finish off, are grown readers psychic? That's a brilliant question. I'd say some are and some are not. I can't speak for other people and I wouldn't. But I would say that if you're using symbols regularly, then you are going to start connecting with, more importantly, your higher self and maybe your, your holy guardian angel. So when I do a reading, yes, I'm interpreting the symbols that are physically and logically in front of me. But I also sometimes get maybe sensations or feelings. I'm very much, I'm much more clairsentient, which means I get sensations or feelings about a situation or a person. And if it's appropriate, and if it's appropriate only, then I will share them. So the answer to your question is, I guess that some room readers are psychic and some are not. Um, but I can only speak for me. So I go with what my feelings are. And sometimes I'll say... I've done a reading for some several years ago, and I mentioned about an apple pie. I didn't know where that came from, and this girl broke down in tears in front of me, and she went, my gran used to make me apple pie. It really reminds me of her. It just says that she's still around, and she's still thinking of me. And, hey, I didn't know where that came from, but I knew that I had to say to her, you know, I've got a message here about apple pie. So um, sometimes, you know, we have to take a chance and go with what intrinsically feels right. It's like an inner knowing. So, yeah, I guess you'd call that psychic. Thanks, Anne. Thank you so much for talking to me today. Thank you.